Oh man, it looks like they're trying to cancel my guy Joe Rogan, man. They're trying to cancel my guy Joe Rogan from somebody that's been a fan of the show from 370 upwards. It's sad to see. But it was on the cards, let's be honest. Even as, you know, um, long-time JRE fans like myself, it was always on the cards. The moment that guy took Spotify money, it was like a ticking time bomb as to when and how they were going to try and cancel him. Because he's always been a bit of a nuisance. I think this mainstream media, whatever it is, whatever you'd call that conglomerate, have always had an issue with him because he's got an outsized influence on society, especially in America. Because he's just one dude with Jamie doing a podcast, but he essentially touches millions of different people. He informs millions of different people. And also people are legitimately tuning into what he has to say and what he's doing more so than watching, you know, mainstream channels and mainstream news sources. So obviously those people in those positions are not going to be happy about him because he essentially is stealing or taking away views and attention and ad revenue that they could be generating and taking it all to for himself. And of course, the deal he's getting on his own, just doing a podcast, is just ridiculous in terms of the numbers, right? So really a very outsized influence. But he was always on the fringes. Now that he's kind of been welcomed into the mainstream by being part of Spotify and getting a big deal, it was always going to be um, sooner rather than later that that was going to come to an end in some way, shape, in the kind of some way, shape or form, right? Because it feels like there's a concerted effort from the powers that be to end this guy in a way of like maybe deplatforming him from Spotify and maybe having to relegate him to kind of, you know, going back on YouTube or setting up his own sort of space where he can kind of do his own thing, which is really not the place that we want to be in because it's kind of looking like it's going to be that way. It looks like there's no tolerance at the moment. Right or left, there's no tolerance. The right can't stand the left, the left can't stand the right, and there is no centrism. So what's going to look, what, so what ends up, what I think will end up happening in the future, they'll end up having to be two social medias, two internets, um, two media platforms that you could basically go to that cater to whatever political leanings that you have or ideology that you have, which I think is dangerous because that kind of division is gonna go to, is only going to drive contempt, which is going to drive infighting, which is going to drive war, blah, 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 blah. It's not really a good thing. You want everyone to kind of get along kumbaya style, not let freedom and heal the world with love, but there has to be some level of like, okay, let's let's learn how to get along without getting along that doesn't kind of you know um end up being oh let's just have two stations that speak bad about each other and then not have really objective news and just use it as a platform to kind of enrage our viewer base which is what it's kind of turning into but anyway fast forward um i spoke the other day on the podcast about joe rogan's podcast allegedly um deleting over 100 i think episodes in the archives a lot of them were deleted when he first joined post spotify he had never really offered an explanation as to why they were deleted a lot of them were friends of his in the comedy scene some of them were people that got cancelled like the crystal and the brian callens but it was disappointing to see somebody that was so anti-censorship who decided just to kind of allow spotify to delete the episodes that they wanted just so he could secure his deal now i understand it's 100 million dollars maybe some more i get it when someone offers that money maybe your kind of morals and your ethics kind of go out the window but it would have been nice to get an explanation from him to his fans to be like hey i know i i was saying this pro censorship stuff and i was, I was anti-censorship and whatever it may be and i've got these episodes lead from my page but this is the reason why and obviously this is a licensing deal once i'm off this platform i still have those episodes in the archive and i can re-upload them in another site if need be or something along those kind of lines but he didn't do any of that and he kind of said it in passing and kind of made a joke out of it when he was talking to i think fahim anwar or something and it was kind of a bit annoying in that regard but i kind of got it and i moved on i didn't really mind now suddenly off the back of this covid19 misinformation thing that everyone's trying to cancel him for now it looks like a further 70 episodes have been deleted so now it's come up to about over 100 or maybe 113 that they're kind of really going for in terms of deleting in, in an archive, which makes you think, hmm, this 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 now isn't just an issue of porting over the shows and him saying they were lost in the in the transfer. And this obviously isn't kind of Spotify saying we don't want these ones. This is clearly episodes that he's deleting because he feels like they're the ones that might have the most um controversial snippets and opinions that might get him in further trouble. And now it's no surprise that we've now got this video courtesy of Wellside Hip Hop feature, featuring artist India Irie, who basically posted a compilation of her stories of Joe Rogan, unfortunately, saying the R word. And um, yeah, it's a bit brutal to listen to. I'm not going to lie. But again, being a long time Jerry fan, I know he used to use this language in the past. It didn't really sit right with me at the time when I heard it. It kind of sting a little bit. But also, I listen to a lot of messed up stuff. And if I'm completely honest, my podcast listening, um, you know, um, my uh, catalog of stuff I listen to in terms of podcasts 
is fairly wide in terms of spectrum and i'm rarely if ever offended by the things that they say i really don't give a fuck i really could care less but i know some people when they see this stuff they'll be like oh my god uh, he's racist which he clearly isn't just trying to be edgy trying to be a comedian trying to be funny on his show back in the day when no one was listening and now hundreds of thousands of people are listening obviously when these things come back up again they look mad crazy but it obviously is an indication that people are trying to end this guy and take him off of spotify but this is a clip of india re talking about the you know evidence that she's found about joe rogan talking on his podcast and saying some very unsavory words hey y'all i want to leave a short message here about why i decided to why i decided to ask my music be pulled off of spotify so check this out like you know the nigger thing yes yeah. saying the word nigger oh, you've already said nigger or d is just like nigger well, saying nigger she's calling you a nigger <laughs> nigger and starts calling them niggers or nigger there should be a word like nigger especially like the word nigger that's our nigger the niggers he says nigger guy a nigger and then our niggers start saying nigger uh, use the word nigger not the word nigger say nigger or nigger hearing him say hearing him say nigger so much is fucking hilarious i'm not going to lie it's such a brutal word isn't it? you hear that someone's but i don't know man again it's a I don't know, man. I, I I don't know. I just think again. I I generally think no one really cares about this, but it's just a thing that you can use to cancel somebody. So when you, because I've always said usually, I, yeah, I've always said I would really wish in another world I could be some sort of um, uh, crisis advisor or fixer for a Hollywood star or something because I think I would have a really good understanding of what people are saying about my client, and I try my best to help them navigate the kind of you know the choppy waters of hate that exists on the internet but from what i found from my time on social media i found usually if people are trying to cancel you it's usually because they don't like you as a person and if that's the case they're going to try and use any and everything that's available on the internet to bring you down so if you're if if you're not a likable character on the internet you have to be very mindful that you don't hire you don't give your you know your haters any free ammunition to bury you you don't want that to happen so you have to get rid of stuff maybe nuke some things here da, da, da. you have to do that in the background as you continue going on but i think some people i don't know why some celebrities some public figures they have a really warped sense of how they're perceived and they generally think that everyone loves them or they generally think that everyone hates them but you have to kind of be aware of like the where the hate is the pockets of the hate and what they're actually saying about you so you can have time to kind of counteract and protect yourself in the background because i generally don't think for the longest time joe thought he said anything wrong i think he was just thought yeah i'm repeating this word richard pryor named the special it it's a bit edgy to say and he just kept on saying it because it was funny and why not in it whatever and then the moment it became a problem, it was already too late. But I think because he thought everyone loves Joe Rogan, he never thought this could end him, which it effectively could. Now, it's not going to end him in a conventional sense. He's not going to be broken, desolate anytime soon. But in terms of him being available on Spotify, this could be one of those things that would be the final name on the coffin for most people in terms of using that word, because nowadays people don't really stand for, you know, people that don't look like myself using that kind of word. But it's hilarious. It really is hilarious just to hear him uttering the word um, out loud. <laughs> Say nigger, and he couldn't say nigger. What's nigger? I empathize with the people who are leaving for the COVID disinformation reasons, and I think that they should. I also think that Joe Rogan has the right to say what he wants to say. I also think that I have the right to say what I want to say. So, as an artist who builds Spotify, is built on the back of the music streaming. So they take this money that's built from streaming, and they pay this guy a hundred million dollars, but they pay us. 0.003% of a penny just take me off I don't want to generate money that pays this which is fair. Again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, which is completely fair. And I think it actually says a lot about her as an artist that she'd want to stand on that principle. I think it's good. And if anything, it's actually might be beneficial for music streaming artists in the future because it might actually, you know, push Spotify into giving artists a bigger cut of the share or bigger cut of the percentage, whatever. Who knows? I doubt it. Most likely it's not. They're going to probably just braze under the carpet. And if anything, they're going to sacrifice Joe Rogan and sacrifice your lamb and just continue to pay artists 0.03% of every stream. That's what's going to actually happen. But I do like that she has some sort of principle and she's standing on it and be like, you know what? I don't know vibe with this, so I'm going to jump off. The concerning part for Joe 
is that all of these kind of Hollywood figures that were first coming out and supporting his first statement where he was basically trying to clarify his misinformation speak and basically being quite apologetic to Neil Young and sharing that story that he's said a million times on the podcast. You saw a few comments from a little, from loads of Hollywood elite people, you know, actors and whatnot, kind of lending their support because even though they don't say it, a lot of the kind of big A-list stars out there are very much anti-vax. I think there was a stat somewhere that said a lot of the whole people that work in Hollywood, the actual actors on screen and shit, you know, the percentage of them that have been vaccinated is very, very, very low. A lot of them are skeptic. A lot of them are either anti-vax or COVID skeptical. So it was no surprise to see them commenting on the post. One of the people that was commenting on these posts that everyone was surprised by was The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. He said something like, oh, I'd love to be on the show. I'm supporting you, brother. And everyone's like, oh my God, wow, amazing. I think it got like 15,000 likes, that comment alone. But unfortunately, because there's other videos come out now about him using the N-word, somebody obviously sent it to him. And he now obviously, you know, The Rock Dwayne Johnson is, is not a person. He's an entity. He's a corporation in and himself. He represents loads of other brands that he's also responsible for presenting in a somewhat milk toast way. And he has people that he was also supporting with his mere presence. He has responsibility to them. So now he's come out with a statement effectively distancing himself from Joe Rogan, even though just the other day he was supporting him. So quite clearly, this is already an indication of the sea changing in terms of the sentiment around Joe Rogan. So it would it would be no surprise for me if sooner rather than later we hear that Spotify decided to end their partnership with Joe. Um, you know, they're going to end it sooner than they did previously. They're going to terminate it, pay him out of his deal and then kind of continue on because they can't take this kind of level of scrutiny. I don't think so. Um, I don't think he can because he's been apologizing more now they might have ever seen Joe Rogan ever apologize in the history of the podcast um is clearly you know the kind of influence that the stock market has and the responsibility taking that 100 million and wanting to do right by the people that give you that money and trying to be a stand-up person is definitely weighing on him and I don't think he's going to be able to withstand that kind of pressure so far no one has been able to withstand that kind of pressure if he can it would be a flipping um great moment for culture in general but yeah let's see but yeah the rocks um response to somebody sending him obviously the clip of that n-word i think a guy called D don winslow said as follows dear rock you're a hero to many of people and using your platform to defend your rogue and a guy that used the laughed and used and laughed about using the n-word dozens of time is terrible use of your power have you actually listened to this man's many racist statements about black people he's not racist he was making a joke he's trying to make a comment trying to be edgy but joe rogan's not racist I don't, uh, throwing throwing terms like racist and nuts at people just because they say stuff that you don't like is a bit insane let's have some evidence of him actually being racist and then i'm happy to co-sign if you're just angry they said the n-word cool but you know you saying the n-word and actually being racist are completely two different things in my opinion but again what do I know? Let's continue. The Rock statement said the following. Uh, Dear Don Winslow, thank you so much for this. I hear you as well as everyone here, 100%. I was not aware of his N-word use prior to my comments, but now I've become educated to this complete narrative. <laughs> Learning moment for me. Malaha, ma mahalo, brother, and have a good and productive weekend, DJ. I don't know what this hell this means. I've become educated to this complete narrative. I think that's just Hollywood speak for I'm disavowing this guy without publicly disavowing him because I also don't want to appear to be a bit of a flip-flop and also don't want to appear to be like, you know, bending the knee. But effectively, that is him bending the knee. And it's sad to see, but again, this guy represents a lot. He's a big corporation. He's not a person. He's basically an entity. So it's kind of to be expected. And then, of course, Joe Rogan had to respond and offer up his apology. And you know it's serious. He's in a black jumper. He's sitting in front of a bookcase looking very somber, like he just got a dressing down from people on the phone that or maybe he got a dressing down from some of his uh, black colleagues in comedy who maybe weren't so. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in. If you're actually about this life and you're a stand up comedian, because that's the thing about Joe Rogan, call him a lot of things. But what he does do is give a platform to shitty comics sometimes to get on his show and to basically boost their audience to be able to earn loads of money go on tour and basically advertise himself and it's essentially become the de facto place you you want to go to if you want to go and promote your comedy special i wonder if these motherfuckers these spineless comedians will they actually decide to step out like india ire did reshare her video and say i'm also taking a stand and i'm refusing to support anything that guy does joe rogan or will they try and just pretend they didn't see it if they do really, you know, um, disagree with his use of the N-word. Because this will be a time to actually stand up for the things you talk about. Because a lot of these podcasts, especially these stand-up comedian podcasts, they have a lot to say politically, right? About society, about this, about comedy will save the world. Ah, loads of things to rabbit on about. But the moment it starts to include, but the moment it starts to affect their pocket, 
and their ability to market themselves or brand themselves, they're conveniently silent. They conveniently start looking at the roof. Oh, what's that on the ceiling? No one wants to pay any attention. No one wants to say anything. And to be honest, Joe Rogan also has to take some blame for himself because as much as a fan of him I am, he said absolutely nothing in defense of Chris D'Elia and Brian Callen, who are both of his friends, most so Brian Callen. Again, I know the accusations are really serious. They're not, you know... They're not something you could just come out and defend your friend's front street with. But to be the anti-cancellation guy, to be the anti-censorship guy, and to suddenly remain mute when your best friends or one of your best friends is being accused of some heinous crimes, especially when you consider what Joe has said about Callan himself and how he hooks up with Gail. It's like he said, there's a really sketchy, sketchy clip where he basically, you know, again, I don't want to repeat it because I don't want to get the guy in trouble. But still, that was a disappointing part of it. So maybe this is some sort of like non if you don't stand up for your friends karma coming back and kicking him up in the ass because i feel like if you went out of your way to stand up for your friends and defend you know them in some way or defend their character from what you know of them maybe this backlash wouldn't have been as harsh i don't think it would have helped really but you can never know but anyway it's a clip of um joe kind of apologizing not kind of apologizing profusely about his word about his use of the n-word all over these years i'll play a minute of it and then i'll end it hello friends um I'm making this video to talk about the most regretful and shameful thing that I've ever had to talk about publicly. There's a video that's out that's a compilation of me saying the N-word. It's a video that's made of clips taken out. He looks tired as well, isn't it, man? It's get, like, Joe's aged more in the last five years or so, or maybe even two years than he has done in the entire time of the podcast. Yes, I know he takes a lot of gear and whatnot, but still, he's aged a lot, man. This sometimes, sometimes all money is not good money. A hundred million dollars from Spotify at the time sounds insane. And again, from what we've heard from reports of comedians that talk too much and can't shut their mouths, supposedly it was way more than a hundred million just to license the fucking podcast. A crazy deal, amazing deal, life changing, generational money. But he was still making boatloads of cash anyway. I think at the last time I was checking, I read somewhere that he was making anywhere between like 30 to 50 million dollars per year off the podcast and ads and whatnot, blah, 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 from views, you know, whatever, right? I'm sure a lot of it got affected by Google, by YouTube AdSense and whatnot, because I think a lot of these videos got taken down and demonetized. So I think the move to go to Spotify was mostly in part because of that, because, you know, you spend four hours talking to somebody, you think you're going to be making some good money off the podcast and suddenly they flip and demonetize the entire thing because you spoke about trans issues. I can understand why you'd get a bit of annoyed. You'd be like, you know what? I'm not spending my time uploading stuff on this platform because they're not protecting their creators. But the consequences of taking that money has now, it's become like a golden chalice, right? In some regard, right? That he's now kind of, um, he's now basically at the beck and mercy of this big corporation and especially the moves of the stock market. And now that people are really sensitive about people spreading what they say is COVID misinformation out there, they're using this N-word Trojan horse to basically get him out of here. That's what it kind of feels like. Out of context of me, of... 12 years of conversations on my podcast and it's all smushed together and it looks fucking horrible even to me now i know that to most people there is no context where a white person is ever allowed to say that word never mind publicly on a podcast and i agree with that now i haven't said it in years but for a long time when I would bring that word up, like if it would come up in conversation and stay, instead of saying the N word, I would just say the word. I thought as long as it was in context, people would understand what I was doing. <laughs> like that context was part of the clip we were talking about Red Fox, how Red Fox said that word on television in the 1970s and how times have changed so much since then. Or about how Richard Pryor used it as one of the titles of one of his albums. Or I was quoting a Lenny Bruce bit, or I was quoting a Paul Mooney bit, or a, I was talking about how Quentin Tarantino used it repeatedly in Pulp Fiction, or I was talking about how a Netflix executive, ironically, used it because he was trying to compare it to another offensive word, and he said it out loud, and they fired him, not calling anybody or just saying the word out loud. I was also talking about how there's not another word like it in the entire English language because it's a word where only one group of people is allowed to use it and they can use it in so many different ways. Like if a white person says that word, it's <laughs> racist and toxic. I don't know, man. This is some bullshit. 
white people's fascination with saying nigger is just so weird. And I guess because it's whenever something's whenever something's um not allowed or not permitted or looked at, like people are automatically are like, even look at his eyes here. Look at that. That's the eyes of somebody. I want to say nigger. Why can't I say nigger? Like, what is the what is this fascination with this word? I don't understand it. Of all the hundreds and millions of words that you could use in the English language, that word seems to be the one word white people just can't seem to let go of. They're just intrigued by it. They want to just let it slip out of their tongue like nigger. And it's like, just relax. Relax. It's not that big of a deal. You omit that one word from your vocabulary. It, it saves you a whole world of bother. You don't lose your job. You don't lose your deals. You don't get deplatformed. It's, you know, the incentives to not use the word are pretty high. Now, the obviously the risk and reward thing is high too because you use the word and you use it in a really derogatory manner. You could essentially become, you could essentially go from being unknown to being very well known in a very short space of time. Think of all those people that get cancelled, like the Karens and stuff, where they hurl abuse at some store attendant and say, oh, you fucking nigga, you didn't give me a refund. That person went from being unknown to suddenly being very famous, obviously for something crazy. But if you really want fame and you're really, it's if you're really fame hungry and you really want to be about this life, you should just go out there and go to the most densely populated black neighborhood you could find and just scream, niggas! <laughs> I mean, that's what you should be really doing. <laughs> Where are the niggas? A nigga took my purse. That's what you should be trying to do when you're out there. Really, you should be trying to do that. Then you become famous, but no one's really about this life. Everyone talks a big game like they're about it, but they're not really about it. They're not, they're not really. Oh, mate, I find it absolutely insane how much white people fucking love that word. It's just like, let it go, man, let it go. But yeah, Joe Rogan, man, like, it looks like they're going to deep platform him. I don't think this is going to end any other way. There's too much fucking pressure being built up here. Personally, I think it's a nonsense. I think if you don't like his show, tune into something else. The COVID misinformation thing is nonsense too because just a few months ago or a couple of years ago, saying that, you know, this virus might have been a lab leak, you were basically... um uh, you know, people regarded you as a fucking Nazi, um, saying that maybe giving the vaccine to children wasn't the best way to go forward. You would be, you know, regarded as a psychopath. And now these arguments are things that people are legitimately talking about in open circles. So um, this whole misinformation thing is bullshit. It's a new virus. We had no idea it existed prior to obviously taking over and covering parts of most of our world. We're kind of learning as we go along, along with the experts. We make mistakes. We say some incorrect things here and there. It is what it is. But the ones that who should be accused of information are these governments who are taking you know advantage of the situation putting into place powers and bills and regulations and images of privacy that are essentially eroding whatever sense of freedom that we once had that's actual misinformation that's something that you should really be you know um taking more action against especially when it comes to big pharma in the united states but again instead of all those questions um mo let's just direct the questions at joe rogan like oh yeah, yeah these people are flipping insane man legitimately insane but you know what can you do